Hey guys, welcome to today's purchase or pass, faves and fails for March. This is the video where I talk about all the products that I've been testing that are new or new to me products and I do little speed reviews. I have been, for the last month, been putting on the makeup while I'm talking about the products because when I was doing the previous months, I was actually doing cutaways of me applying it and it was just taking too much time to edit and I'm pretty limited on the amount of time that I have to kind of dedicate to the editing portion. So I'm trying to help myself a little bit and I'm gonna be applying Applying them how I talk about them. I always go through these where I talk about them in order of how I would apply them to my face so they're all set up behind me grouped into categories. I have quite a few products today. Let me count them. I actually have less for March than I have had in previous months. I have about 40 items. I think it actually totals to about 41. Again, these are new releases and new to me products that I've been testing, so let's hop right into it. So I actually wanna start off with lip balms. I have one of the cherry lip balms from like the Flirty Talk collection from ColourPop. I actually really liked all of the lip products that came in the collection. I don't know, they were just really good quality. I think they're in their normal line. This one happens to not be from ColourPop. This is from Fourth Ray Beauty. And I liked all of the lip products that came. I even got a lip scrub. It was also like super cherry and delicious and I don't know, they all seemed like really good quality. The lip scrub was in a bullet like this. And I do wanna throw this on just right now to give myself a little bit of hydration. And this is my first like fourth rate beauty lip product and a lot of the stuff that came with that collection I think are like popular products within ColourPop, one of the lip products in particular. So I've been enjoying this. It's not a revolutionary product. This is not a run out and buy. I could see myself grabbing for this a lot, like putting it in my purse. One of the things that I like to do in this video is tell you whether or not it's a purchase, pass, or it's gonna become, honestly, makeup graveyard. When I say makeup graveyard, it is the makeup that just doesn't inspire me to reach for it. It doesn't make me think of it all the time, and it will just go into my collection, and it will probably just sit there in the makeup graveyard. So I think this is probably probably one that's like right between kind of makeup graveyard, something that I would throw on my purse and like just, you know, use to hydrate. I throw a lot of things in my purse. So I don't know if I would remember to like just reach for this, but I do think that it's a good lip balm and it's pretty affordable. One lip balm that is an absolute pass for me was a new launch from Catrice. This was the Powerful Lip Care. It is a terrible shade on me. It is such a mad product. It just, I don't like the shade. It is beautiful, but honestly, because it's so fair and I'm so fair, it just washes out on my lips. I thought it would be nice. This one is in sparkling guava, but it's such a math formula idea. It just, it doesn't spark joy or inspire me in any single way. So this one is just a pass for me. I probably have the most primers in today's video that I've ever had before, just because I've been testing a lot of new primers lately. And I've trying, been trying to do it mostly to kind of target my redness. And so that's kind of out of the normal for me. I don't usually test this many primers, but one of them was a blurring primer that I just fell in love with. This was the So Blown Primer from Cali Ray. First time trying Cali Ray products, I got this and their skin tint. It's amazing. I don't think that they're the most affordable thing on the market. In fact, they're kind of high priced for how, how much product actually comes in a lot of their stuff. But man, I have fallen just deeply in love with everything that I've been trying. I do think that it's a nice blurring primer, but it's lightweight, it's not drying. And that's important for me because I have super dry skin. And yeah, I highly recommend this particular product. This is a super duper purchase for me if you do like blurring primers. One that is a pass is from the drugstore. This is a CC Swirl Primer from Makeup Revolution. This one is actually a color correcting primer with vitamin C and hyaluronic acid. This is supposed to target not only your redness, but kind of dull some of the discolorations on your face. So it's supposed to target like a lot of things. And I think that it's cool. Like it's definitely cool packaging. I think that it looks like really swirled. Well, it's not as much right now. When it's on the back of your hand, it kind of looks like toothpaste. It's cooling. It's a cool texture, but it didn't do anything when it got to my face. So I will put this one on just so you guys can see. Like the one thing that I really needed to do, right, is just to target the redness and it just dissipated into nothing. You can't judge this from how much I rub my face and how red it gets, but in a minute you'll kind of see like, it just doesn't do anything. It's nice, it's hydrating, it feels good, but I don't think it specifically targeted any of the redness or dulled any of the discoloration. It just kind of seemed to do kind of nothing. I have two more that are anti-redness primers and one I like, but it just doesn't also seem to really do anything. This is the redness reducing primer from Essence. And this one has green tea extract, so it's a pretty strong smell. 
and I like it for its formulation like it's so light and thin and like in theory that's kind of what you're looking for for a redness reducer or a color corrector because you're going to be layering stuff on top of it and so you want it to be thin enough that it's not causing your foundation to look too heavy or to sit funny on it but it's just too thin it just doesn't do anything it kind of melts into my skin and looks like nothing happened so honestly i think that even though i like a lot of essence products and that's really inexpensive it just didn't do enough for me one anti-redness primer that i do like that i actually found is more effective than a lot of the ones that i've been trying is the one from catrice i did a full face of catrice and tried a bunch of their stuff now in theory i think this probably kind of defeats the purpose because it's a thicker consistency it has some texture to it but because it does, I think it targets my redness a little bit more. The only thing that I notice with this product is that when you put it on places that you have a little bit of peach fuzz, I feel like it clings to it and it does like turn it a color of green. But I do think that it does a better job on my redness than really any other anti-redness primer that I've been trying or color corrector that I've been trying recently. And boy, I feel like I have been trying a lot just left and right. But even now, see, I feel like I have like a green mustache because it's clinging to all of my hairs. So I'd honestly say like this is a makeup graveyard. Even though I think that it, it targets some of my redness, I just don't like the fact that it clings to my hairs and I don't know, I probably am not gonna continue reaching for this even though I think it was more effective than the other ones. It's just like, well, you know, it's kind of catch 22, right? You give a little, you take a little, and I don't think it's worth it for how much I have to kind of like get my green mustache to go away even though I feel like it was more effective color corrector than the rest. So pass, pass, didn't do anything. The only one I liked out of this group that I know that I'm going to continue reaching for is the So Blown Blurring Primer from Cali Ray. Now let's move on to skin tints and foundations. I actually have, I think, two foundations and then one skin tint. The first one is the Free Dreaming Skin Tint from Cali Ray. I instantly fell in love with this. This is a huge, huge purchase. You guys, if you like light, like medium, buildable coverage in a skin tint but that is really really good for like dry skin this is it it doesn't do anything negative for me i find that like everything that i wanted to do which is just look skin like and give just the right amount of coverage i think this one does it i just instantly fell in love with this and honestly it's not all skin tints i have a lot of trouble with not looking too heavy or even dry for a formula that feels like it would be super hydrating in a lot of the skin tints that I've been trying, like recently even. The Tula one, for example. The Summer Fridays one, for example. There's just been a lot, I feel like, that I tried probably the end of the year, beginning part of this year, and <laughs> for whatever reason, they were sitting funny on me. They really look dry in some of my drier areas, which is just unusual for a skin tint. I usually get pretty good hydration out of them. And this was one that I was like, oh, I can't put it down. And I have mine in the shade The Two, a very light dream. It's a really liquidy formula, but I don't feel like it, you know, it's so thin that it doesn't give you any coverage. I just think it looks super skin-like and just offers me the right amount of like hydration and coverage that I'm looking for. So this is a huge purchase, a huge recommendation. I did have this in my like top Sephora products because I just think that Kelly Ray does a really good job with their formulations, everything that I've tried anyway. And um, yeah, I'm gonna totally keep reaching for this. I do wish that it had like an SPF in it, but it doesn't. I mean, that would be super cool if it did because then I could wear it like, you know, in the summertime as just kind of like a one and done step. But it has prickly pear hydration, sheer buildable application, blurring illusion, vitamin C and E infusion and silicone free foundation. So they are a clean beauty brand. All of their stuff is like that. Their aesthetic is just kind of pretty cool. So this is a huge purchase for me. I have two more foundations. The first one that I have is the new Laura Mercier Weightless Perfecting Foundation. I think this got mixed reviews. I think people were like, weightless, what is that? I noticed the weightless piece comes from how oily it is. If you guys can see, like watch me wipe it on. It's such a oily foundation. It's got such an oily base. The reason it feels weightless is because that's where a lot of the pigment comes from. It's just so rooted in how oily it is that it 
like blends in with the skin seamlessly. You can't even really tell like that you're putting it on. You don't feel it on the back of your hand when you're swatching it. And it's because it's like straight oil that you're putting onto your face. It even almost kind of has like that scent to it. Like it's just made in sheer oils, but I like it. Like that's the ultimate what I get out of it. I have mine in the shade 2N1 Cashew, which actually might be a little bit too dark for me. I mean, it's definitely darker than the Cali Ray one. I don't mind it when I'm wearing it by itself, but it's kind of noticeable up against a lighter foundation. The bottom line is, because I have such dry skin, this is a really good foundation for me because it's so rooted in like its base ingredient being an oil that it works well for me because there are a lot of foundations that I actually mix in with a facial oil. So this is kind of that. It's the version of like a satin finish foundation that you've just mixed in with oil that she has formulated in a foundation. So I like that if you're somebody that has dry skin, I think you would probably like this too. It's definitely like a medium coverage. It's more than the Cali Ray, I think. I don't know if this is buildable because I've never tested that, but I do like it. I think that the mixed reviews probably come from the fact that certain people who just don't like a oilier foundation or maybe somebody who has like combo or oily skin tested it and just, you know, it's not their thing. I don't know, but this is a purchase for me. I really do enjoy this foundation. The last one that I have is the Tarte Maracuja Juicy Glow foundation and I have mine in the shade Light Neutral 16N Fair. Well, or 16N Fair Light Neutral, I guess is what it is. And again, probably another product that I hear mixed reviews on. It is really something. Like it's definitely got texture to it. It's definitely got a sheen about it. Like it definitely has like, ooh, like it's a little metallic and you know, it's a thicker consistency, but I liked it. I don't know what my problem is. I enjoyed this foundation. It just didn't look funny on my face. It didn't sit funny. The metallicness that comes from the swatch, it didn't last on me. It was hydrating enough. It is a thick formula, so I think less is more with this, but it worked for my skin and it may not work for everybody's skin. And so I think you have to have a similar skin type probably, which is like on the drier side maybe to really like this and use just a little bit of product, but I quite enjoyed it. I actually liked all the foundations that I tried this month. It is not always like that. I usually get more that I dislike than like, so I'm pleased. The thing is, I don't know if that's something that I would recommend. Like, I'm not gonna tell you, you need to run out and purchase this. I think it's fun and it works, but I don't think I would wear it every day. Like, it's not something that I think about reaching for all of the time, so it's not a huge purchase for me the way that I think these two are. I don't think this is like a pass, though. This might be more of like a makeup graveyard, but I do think about using it. So it's nice, it's good, it's just not a run out and get. Two concealers for the month of March. One of them I absolutely hate, and the other one I really, really like. So the first one that I have is the Physician's Formula Butter Glow Concealer. I hated this. I think it actually already has pretty good reviews on it. I don't know. This one is in the shade light to medium. It has this puffy on the end, which I did end up trying to use, but it's just so stiff. It was like picking up most of the product and I just wasn't like getting anything. Like the, it was just lifting the product off of my face. And I originally thought like, oh, this will be cool because when I swatched it, it was so lightweight. It's really, really thin formula. It's just almost watery. It was just so watery that I, I just didn't like it. And because it's like a thinner formula, I actually thought that it would, you know, because it's so lightweight that it would like not crease under my under eyes, but I feel like it got drier as the day went on, which is so surprising because it feels like the Laura Mercier and then it just has like a lot of oils in it and then it would be good for somebody with dry skin. But yeah, for whatever reason, this product doesn't like sink into the skin properly. And so therefore it starts to like sit on the skin and then kind of crease. It's really, really weird. And I don't think that it like gives that much coverage. I think it definitely does something. I just wouldn't want to build it because it doesn't absorb into my skin. I just don't think that this is 
that great of a product, it's definitely not something that I'm really interested in keeping in my collection, to be honest. So I don't necessarily think that I thought this was a bad product when I first tried it. Just a couple of things that I noticed is like, that's a no-no, I'm not gonna grab for that again. So from me, someone who's dry skin and 38 years old, I didn't love that and it's a pass. The one that I really like, and I hate to say it because it's so much more expensive, is the multi-purpose corrector from Givenchy. This is the skin caring concealer. They came out with a bunch of like correctors, but this one was like the concealer concealer. This one is in the shade N120. I have this foundation and I actually really like it. It's very, very glowy, especially, like it's a refreshing kind of glowy. Like it gets glowier as the day goes on, the foundation does. And I don't think it's like super glowy when you put it on and you can mattify it a little bit if you use like a mattifying primer. So I don't think it's like a super, super dewy foundation. I was expecting the concealer to kind of be like a similar formula, like a little bit hydrating, more dewy finish. I don't think that this concealer is necessarily a dewy finish or overly hydrating, but I think it's like perfect. It's like the right kind of coverage. It's the right kind of texture. It's like thin enough, but like, I don't know. It's, it's honestly super nice under my under eyes. It seems to sink in really well into my skin. It has really medium coverage. That's just kind of the concealer that I kind of reach for. Something that's maybe a little bit more radiant, has medium coverage and yeah. So I really, really enjoyed this one. I kept reaching for it outside of just like testing purposes because I quite enjoyed using this. So I know that this is definitely a pricier thing and you know, I would have loved to have recommended something that was a little bit more affordable, but it just wasn't the case with formulation. Let us move on into setting powder. So I only actually have one. This was also another product that I picked up from Catrice. This was their baking and setting loose powder. This is mattifying water resistant, a second skin effect. You guys, if I haven't mentioned as I've been doing this, like those that are new releases and those that are new to me, like let me pause for just a moment and like tell you which were new releases. So as it comes to the primer, this was released in January. This one from Cali Ray was an older product. This one from Catrice is an older product. This primer from Essence, again, was released in January with a lot of like drugstore releases. This Cali Ray was an older product. The Laura Mercier was brand, brand new. I think it launched in March. Same with the Tarte Maracuja Juicy Glow. This lip care from Catrice, it was also a new release. This one from Physicians Formula, it is a new release. The Givenchy Prism Libre Skin Caring Concealer was a new release. So quite a bit of new releases. This particular powder, I was shocked. I actually fell in love with how well it like bakes. I'm not a big baker, but sometimes I feel like I put on powder so quickly that it doesn't do anything, you know? Like it doesn't overly set my makeup. I put it on, I blend it in, I'm kind of done with it. Maybe it doesn't do that much. Or if it's a really good baking slash setting powder, then it's like too dry on me because I just can't use a super heavy powder. This was one that I was immediately drawn to that I actually think like airbrushed my skin, set my makeup, was good for baking and wasn't too heavy, which I think is a lot of things to do, <laughs> honestly. It's just really, really finely milled, super, super smooth. This one is a really, really white shade. It does come with like a net in it and then like a stopper. I actually like the way this is. I just like the design of this, pretty simple, very easy to use. This is in C01 translucent. I don't know. I really enjoyed this. I actually pulled it out thinking, oh my gosh, it has quite a bit of coverage to it. And I thought that it would be too drying on me because it kind of looks that way, but it doesn't get drier as the day goes on. It just kind of like meshes with my skin really beautifully. So I actually think that's a really good product. I'm personally glad that I picked this up. I think this is a purchase. If you want to try something that's like airbrushing, offers quite a bit of coverage um, and you have dry skin. And if you have a really hard time finding powders that don't make you look super cakey, this is actually a really, really good one to try. I don't think it's like my holy grail, but it's a damn good one though, for sure. Let's move on into eyebrow products. I have another one from Catrice. This is not a new release. This is the Clean ID Pure Eyebrow Pencil. This one is in the shade Light Brown. I think this is probably one of the few brow pencils that I've ever tried like in a pencil and not just like a micro brow. It is the kind that you have to sharpen. It makes me kind of feel like 
you know, 1999. I don't know. When I first tried this, I was going in with the lightest can and I was like, oh, this is super creamy and super nice. I just don't think it's super long lasting. And I actually like less pigment than this gives me. And I don't like a sharpenable pencil. I liked it, I think, the first time I tried it, maybe even the second time, but as I continued to use it, I could tell, like, this is just not my cup of tea. I would prefer a micro brow pencil, not even a micro brow pencil. You could give me a diamond shape and I'm cool with it. I just didn't love this. And it could be a formula thing, but because I just don't try very many sharpenable pencils, it turned me off to the sharpenable pencils, if that makes sense. It was kind of like, no, I think I'll stick to my retractable pencils because they just work for me in whatever shape they come in. But this is just a really creamy formula. I think that if you like a creamy pencil formula, then it would be good and this is pretty affordable, but it's not my cup of tea personally. And so this is entirely makeup graveyard for me. I don't even feel like I've used this freaking brow pencil that much. And like, it already needs to be sharpened. That's how creamy it is. And I don't know what about this darn shade is light brown. This looks super, super dark brown to me. It's a good cool tone, but I don't think it's light brown. So I think I have a lot of beefs with that pencil just in general. And so maybe it's not Makeup Graveyard. I mean, I say Makeup Graveyard because I probably won't declutter it right away, but it's like the kind of pencil that I would keep only if like, all my other pencils just stopped working and I needed something. So <laughs> that's why I call it Makeup Graveyard. We are on into bronzers. Let me talk to you about one that I absolutely can't stand that is a huge pass. This is the Ultimate Sculpt Face Palette from Ace Beauté. I got this in a boxy charm. It is terrible. I'm glad that I kept the box because I will not be keeping this. It is a face palette, but it's a bronzing palette. And so it comes with four different shades. If I can ever get this open, I will show you. It's just so, no, the formula is not good. It's like super, uber sticky. Like when it warms up, like after it's been upstairs and it's hot, then it's emollient. But when I come up in the morning and I try and use this, the formula is like dry. Like literally like you have to warm it up before you start using it. It doesn't become emollient until you've really given the warmth of your finger like a good swirl inside of the product. And so the only time I've ever felt this thing be emollient is when I know it's been warmer upstairs. Super stupid. But I just, the only shade that I could see myself using was this one. I did try both of these shades, but this one is like straight up an orange. It's just, it's basically an orange and it looked terrible on the cheeks. And then I tried this one, which I could see being more like a cooler or neutral undertone for my fair skin. It looked awful. It looked so awful. The formula honestly is like, when you bounce it in, it like goes where you put it. And so when I was putting it on with like a sponge or a brush, it was like dot, dot, dot. It was not blending. It's not a blendable formula. Yeah, it's mostly because you really have to warm the sucker up, like like breathe on it or something. I don't know. It's just, ew, no. So this is gonna go to somebody else. Maybe they can find love in it in some of the other shades. It's just, it's not a palette for me. I have two more and one is more like a contour, but both of these are recommendations. They're actually like huge recommendations. One of them I fell in love with from Catrice. It's Shape and Define Contour Stick. It comes with like a lightning shade or a shade that you lighten with on one end that I will absolutely never use. <laughs> and then a really cool, like cool tone, neutral tone bronzing stick or shaping stick and it's not the creamiest like the one that i have from nyx is super duper creamy but honestly it blends in so nicely and it's such a good shade that i fell in love with it because i feel like oh you could travel with this it's a formula that is emollient enough that you could draw it all on everywhere and then blend it in and you're not worried about it drying or starting to like I don't know, get patchy as you let it sit on your face. I, I found it a super easy formula to work with. And do you see how like it's not overly pigmented? And so it just doesn't like get that muddy garbage nonsense on you, which sometimes I find with these contour sticks, especially with fair skin, like, oh, that's just mud on my forehead or, 
you know, I just look super muddy now. I battle that personally all the time because I'm so fair skinned that I look muddy with contour sticks or a lot of them anyway, or they're too gray instead of just being like a neutral light brown. So it may not be for every single skin tone that that happens for, honestly. Like a lot of people might have great success with the shades that are put out for like contour sticks. I just don't personally. And then sometimes it's a formula thing because you're so fair skinned, like everything shows up. Yeah, I just feel like I constantly struggle with contours and shades and like pigmentation and blendability because it just has to be right when it's so noticeable on fair skin. So this one was a huge recommendation for me and it's not that expensive and I reach for it all the time. I really, really like it. This one in the NYX that's like this, so, so good. The next one that I have is a bronzer. This is another one from Catrice. This is the Sun Lover Glow Bronzing Powder and this one's in the shade 010 Sun Kissed Bronze. I picked up a bunch of their powder formula so you're gonna see a couple more in here, but yeah, all of them are so good. They're buildable, just not overly pigmented so you can control how much you're applying to your face. And they're like all like luminous and they have a nice sheen to them. I love them and I love the fact that they're affordable. I just think that these are a really good formulation so I was quite enjoying that. I, I like all of the baked ones that I picked up so um, yeah we're done with that one. That one's a huge purchase if you like something that's affordable that's a really good shade for someone that's like fair skin or light skinned. I think the Sun Kiss Bronze one is good and I love finding like an affordable sheeny kind of subtle shimmery bronzer for like the summertime and that one achieves that. I have the most blushes of all the categories. It was this way the last month as well. Like I just had more blushes than I had anything else. So yeah, we're here again. I love blushes so that's probably going to be a reoccurring theme on my channel. Let me talk about some pretty underwhelming ones in the next couple of ones that I'm going to talk about. I picked up all of the ColourPop heart shape blushes from their flirty talk collection i think these are all like massively underwhelming not just for the formula also for the formula but not just the formula also the shades on these like could you i get it, it was a valentine's day collection but could you give me coral like could you give me something other than all this baby pink shit and then this like bright red i actually think this one was the best shade out of them all because these are all fair nonsense and even though i say like for fair skin i like things that are light i don't when it comes to blushes and so i don't i'm not mad at them for necessarily formulating fun colorful things that a lot of people would like because i think i saw a lot of people say like oh my gosh is this one a dupe for the rosy glow and dior i mean i don't know about that they're nice and all i just honestly they were so freaking chalky like what <laughs> i just don't i i don't need chalk in my life there are so many good affordable blushes in the world that these were not it they were chalky i i just i don't know i felt like i was having to overly rub them in to get them like to really look i mean they look airbrush when you get them there but they're really really chalky otherwise let me see if i can do like just one swatch for you guys so you can like see how they kind of look chalky when you first apply it see how come that's how come that's patchy and so i was kind of going like this and then you see like it now looks airbrushed mm, that's how it looks on your cheeks you first get a lot of powder and chalk that comes up and as you continue to blend it then it kind of looks airbrushed it's just not as smooth a formula as you would think too many pinky damn shades for me i picked up the whole collection thinking i really wanted to see like the formula <laughs> more than I wanted the colors like if I fell in love with the formula then I could find a shade that would work for me but I told you this is my favorite one and like there's not enough range here in my opinion all of these three are very baby doll very light shades no 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 I think your money is better spent elsewhere I'm telling you they're just chalky for me i didn't care for them let me talk about another one that i didn't care for which is also a huge pass this is the cream blush and highlighter cupid cheek duo from natasha no 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 for as much as this cost this looks like a super pasty shade like the formula is just freaking weird man it's like a thick metallic pigment that goes onto your face I don't even want to put this on, but I wish I could just show you. It's like, whew, like a swipe of metallic pigment 
that sits flat on your face and really doesn't offer any dimension. And you would think that it would because it has like a sheen to it, but it doesn't. It I don't know, it's not the greatest quality. The blush looks funny in the pan. It sweats a lot. It's no, no, not good. And this is just a powder highlighter that I didn't find anything special about it. Like it was just, okay, it's a powder highlighter. I'm not saying the highlighter is bad. I enjoy the highlighter much more than the blush, but it's a duo, so you gotta like both. Like a lot of Natasha Denona products, you can usually pop the pans out, but this one doesn't appear to like be poppable. So that's it, you know, if the blush goes, so does the highlighter. It just wasn't like a formulation that really stood out to me that would make me want to like keep the highlighter because I have other ones that I think do a really good job and a lot of Natasha Denona is pretty good. I just didn't like that one. So let's talk about another one that I really don't like. <laughs> I picked this up I think from Sephora. Now I can't even remember. This is the Ready to Bounce Cream Blush from Tres Luce Beauty. This one is out the door. I love the shade. I love the idea of this because it's a cream to powder formula but oh my god it's so underwhelming this one's just more on the dry side and while that's like nice it's again one of those that reminds me of the ace beauté palette where the formula is you pick it up and you start to put it on and then it stays where you put it it's just not blendable you can make this product work and i just love the cream to powder formula and i love that this is a really nice shade that i would just normally like and i like it after i work with it enough to get it onto my cheeks but one thing that pissed me off was like, why do you make it a freaking, like I get that it's a circle, but you just wasted so much space. Like it just seems like a tiny ass pan to me. It just is like, damn, it's small. It's just really small. So it's Makeup Graveyard. I think you can make it work. It does look pretty. Like once you get it on, I would not say though that it's a super long lasting formula. So for me, I wasn't impressed with it. And yeah, Makeup Graveyard. And if I didn't mention it, these two blushes here are not new releases, but the ones from ColourPop are in February. So I didn't really get to test them a whole lot in February because I think I got them closer to like the end of February. So I was testing them more in March. So those are what I would consider new releases. Let's talk about some blushes now that I really, really do recommend. The first ones that I have are the Pure Nude Blushes from Essence. These are their baked blushes. These just recently launched in January. I have the shade Pretty Peach and then Shimmering Rose. They actually look really similar when you're looking at them in the pan, but when you get them to the cheeks, they are, they are quite different. They're really light. Like they're definitely what the Pure Nude Highlighter is, like the equivalent of that. This one is in the Pretty Peach. This one has like a really nice kind of natural sheen to it. I think the one that is in Shimmering Rose is a little bit more sheeny. Maybe not, maybe they're about the same amount of sheen to them. But yeah, just very, very light. They're beautiful on the skin. They actually are quite long lasting. Like I put one of these on recently, like the other day when I went to work and it was still on when I got back and I was surprised because it's just such a light, light, not super buildable formula, just much more of a lighter application. And if you really like that, these are tremendous. They're not only tremendous for their shades, they're tremendous for the formula and long lastingness. I like a more punchy blush on an everyday basis. So these aren't something that I reach for all the time, but if you like a lighter blush, which I know a lot of people do, these are really good and affordable. Another one that I think is really, really good and affordable is the Cheek Lover Oil Infused Blush from Catrice. I think I actually like this better than the ones from Essence because it has even more of like a sheen to it and it's even more pigmented. Here it is down here. It's just more pigmentation. It's just something that I like a little bit more. I really, really like this shade. This one is in Blooming Hibiscus. So yeah, they're very similar formulas. They're both long lasting. And I think they're probably like relatively close in price. They're just a little bit more pigmented. So that's really the only difference from those. I just highly recommend them for an affordable baked formula powder blush. The next ones that I have, I count these as like one item, but they are three different shades and they're in the Charlotte Tilbury blush wands. I did pick up three of the four shades, I think. So Pillow Talk, this one is in Peach Pop and this is Pink Pop. I love this formula. I don't care if it's freaking over priced i love the application i never was a huge fan of her more shimmery formula because 
it was really really metallic on my cheeks and it was pigmented and long lasting and I loved that about it but because it was so metallic it emphasized a lot of the texture on my cheeks and I didn't love it so I, I mean, I like a shimmery blush. I like a pigmented blush, but the, the shimmer is just too much, honestly. So these all are, I mean, they're fairly expensive. They're about $42, but honestly, look, like two dots. And one of my favorite formulations is a cream to powder or a liquid to powder. It's just my kind of blush. I don't, I don't know why I'm really into that. I just am. I guess I like the finish a little bit better because I think the cream to powder formulas they just look more airbrushed on your cheeks in my opinion i just feel like they kind of melt in with your skin a little bit better than a powder that kind of sits on top and the long lasting feature about them is just my favorite so these are a huge recommendation i know that they're pricey you guys but i imagine these would last you forever if they had like an alternative that was the same finish for something that was like less affordable, I would totally recommend those. I just don't think that they have them right now. The one from Tarte that's very similar just wasn't wasn't as good. It had a lot of sheen, not a lot of pigmentation. So I can't recommend that and it's not much less expensive. It's 35 as opposed to the 42. So I really like these personally. I've heard a lot of people say like, hey, they're not worth the hype. Yeah, you could find a cream to powder formula in a lot of blushes and they could be even more affordable But I happen to like the way that those ones apply I like the little puffy. I think it's quite easy I feel like I could be talking about blushes all day I put that one on this cheek because I'm gonna try and do one That's like a fairly similar shade on the other one But let's talk about one that I'm not gonna put on that's a huge recommendation for me. It's so cool This is the blush balm from makeup revolution. It's just a liquid blush. It has vitamin E in it I actually wasn't like convinced about this product when I first got it. It's such a neon shade that it's quite unique in my collection, but not just for the shade. Like it has a lot of opacity, pigmentation. I like the doe foot applicator. I actually thought I wasn't gonna like this, but it blends in perfectly. It just lasts all day. It's just cool. It's cool. It has like a little bit of sheen to it. I didn't think I was gonna like it, but I quite enjoy it. And there aren't very many Makeup Revolution products that I rave about, but I think this was a really good one and it's really affordable. That was a new release, you guys. This one came out in January. These, I think, probably came out like at the very end of February or beginning of March. Let's talk about some older launches that I tried for the first time. This one is the mini one from Benefit. This one is in the shade Georgia. This is like in their older packaging. Oh, I don't like it. I think it's so soft, but I feel like this shade is more like a highlighter because there's not a lot of pigment and then there's just more sheen to it. And straight up, I know this is a blush. It says golden peach blush on it. At first I was like, wait, is Georgia a highlighter? And then I looked at it, I was like, it's not. Like I know the Georgia shade is a blush. That's not enough pigment for me, too much shimmer. I didn't enjoy this. I did pick this up at TJ Maxx because I wanted to give one of the Benefit blushes a, a chance. I've never tried a Benefit blush. Oh no, I have, I've tried one and I ended up, I think decluttering it a while ago because it just didn't give me enough pigmentation. It was like really, really hard pressed in the pan whereas this one actually has a really cool, like really nice and soft texture. It comes off very easily, but there's no pigment. Not, not enough for me, too much shimmer, don't, don't care for it. So that one, I don't actually think I'm gonna keep in my collection. That one I think is a pass. If you're like me and like more pigmentation and less shimmer, that one I would stay away from. I have another one that is not a new release. This is from Nude Sticks. This is one of their nudie mattes. This is an all over face blush color. This one is in the shade In The Nude. I hear so much hype about these that I wanted to give it a shot. And so I bought it a while ago. Man, it was probably back in like October, November, honestly. And then I didn't try it because it just sat in my collection of like things to try. But I was going through so many new releases that the stuff that wasn't new releases, I was kind of putting to the wayside, but I think it's rightfully got its hype, honestly. It is a cream to powder formula. It gives a matte finish and it's super pigmented. And I honestly take this, swipe it on, and I blend it in and I'm done and it lasts me all day. So I really can't ask for anything more. This is definitely a purchase for me. It's on the higher price point and I know they make more affordable options, but as far as it goes, like it is a purchase. Another one that is a huge purchase that I think is maybe even like less expensive than the one from Nude Sticks is the Nude Nanessa Myricks one. This is one of her yummy skin blushes. This one is in Rose and Brunch. 
I freaking love this thing. It's super emollient, like super emollient, and it's got the best pigmentation, super airbrushing, blends in perfectly, sinks into the skin, lasts all day. I recommend this 10 out of 10. This might not be everybody's cup of tea, let's just be honest here, because of how pigmented it is. And you might be someone, someone that likes a lighter blush, but I don't. And I've told you like many times now, the cream to powder formula is my go-to because I really think that it sings into your skin and just looks super airbrushing more than a lot of other blushes like shimmery blushes or lighter blushes. And that was even lighter than the Charlotte. It's definitely buildable. So let me just keep building it just a little bit. But yeah, I mean, it's like seamless and I love that it lasts all day. That's my thing. I do not like to reapply makeup. So whatever I'm wearing, I want it to be a long lasting formula. That is an up or down for me. And it might not be for everybody. Maybe people like applying it or don't want it to last all day. I personally do, so that's a huge recommendation. I think this retails for $25 and these just came out probably in the beginning of March. So I love these. These were in my Sephora favorites video. I will try and go ahead and link that up in the cards. With the Sephora, VIB sale coming up. Honestly, these are a pretty decent price range if you like this kind of blush. I'm actually gonna start the highlighters off now and I'm gonna start off with two that I don't like. I am counting these as one item. These were the highlighters that came with the Flirty Talk collection and they're just very similar to the blushes and that they're like really chalky. I don't know why they came out with five different shades of highlighter but then only four different shades of blush. Again, just kind of a chalkier formula. I didn't think that they did anything spectacular. I felt like they kind of sat on the skin. Didn't necessarily like blend in perfectly. Purple's not my thing. I couldn't even tell if this one was a blush or a highlighter because I think there is a blush that's that shade. My favorite one, honestly, is the Make In Memories one. It's like an icy white but it just feels like a different formula than the other ones. For whatever reason, it's just smoother when you're swatching it, smoother when you're picking it up and it looks smoother on your cheeks. So probably these two are my favorite shades. This one is You're Glowing and then this one's Making Memories. The You're Glowing is more like a champagne-y shade. I just wasn't overly impressed with the formulation, honestly. Like as far as highlighters go, like don't we have decent highlighters that are even more affordable than these? Yeah, we, we do. So I don't know, I wasn't over the moon. I like the packaging, I think they're cute. Honestly, I think that the shades that I do like, the two, um, they're gonna stay with me, but then I'm gonna just declutter the rest. Let's talk about the last highlighter and I don't care for it very much. This is the Spotlight Wand from Flower Beauty. It is like duping the Charlotte Tilbury one. It's beautiful shade. It's very similar, right? Like it's the same applicator, but it dries down so fast that like every time I was getting it on to my cheeks and then trying to like blend it in, it was still just looking like a stripe. Like it wasn't blending in seamlessly. So I don't think it's bad. Like I love the shade, I like the finish. I just don't care for the formula. So I think there are better options than this. I liked Flower Beauty's launches for the contour wands that she came out with or the spotlight contour wands. I thought those were really good, but they're the same formulation. They dry down really, really quickly. So you gotta do like one side at a time. Whereas this one, I just kind of felt like it just, the shading wasn't unique. Whereas the contour ones were kind of good, like in unique shades and neutral tones that I could get over the fact that I had to do one side at a time. It's just that this one in Opal isn't a unique shade. And so for that reason, like, I couldn't get over the fact that the formula just was super hard to work with. So that one is another pass for me. Let's talk about two that are a definite purchase. One is a more affordable one, one is less affordable. It's definitely a higher price point. The first one is not a new release. It's the Glow Lever Oil Infused Highlighter from Catrice. It's in Glowing Peony. You guys, I can't even describe this shade other than like exactly how it looks in the pan. Like the champagne -y pink, but not too heavy on either. And sometimes when you get these marbleized ones, they don't always translate to your cheeks like that. You might get one or the other shade more, but for whatever reason, I get like the perfect amount of both. 
it's so pretty and muted and natural and like i like it so much more than the pure nude one from essence i think this one is a little bit more expensive but the the color is just different i can't describe it other than you definitely get some champagne with a little bit of pink and i don't have any other highlighter that's marbled in this baked formula that's just really pretty and flattering on the cheeks like this so for a lighter highlighter that's a definite purchase for me the next one is a definite purchase again this is a cali ray highlight hybrid feels highlighter it's a clean wet tech highlighter while this one is not a new release this one is this is a putty formula but it's so good it is reminiscent of the ones from ColourPop for sure and then other companies have them as well i just think cali ray did it better it looks like wet but it's nothing it's ultimately like picking nothing up on your finger it looks like it's on my skin like that's just my skin how fun and beautiful and punchy and natural and i love this freaking thing i think i like a punchy highlighter at times i definitely think i like a lighter highlighter also at times so for when i'm trying to reach for something that's really punchy i think this is awesome i think it really really melts into the skin very very nicely it's a really cool shade too it's like a peachy pinky champagne it's like all of those things at once i don't know it's gorgeous and i think with this one it just works better than some of my other putty highlighters. And I feel like I have three or four putty highlighters in my collection at this point. So this one is definitely my favorite. This was in my like top Sephora products and is a recommendation for me. So I love that one, you guys. I can't, I can't, uh, I can't lie. I just have one setting spray. This is from Catrice. This is their long lasting prime and fine multi talent fixing spray. Man, that's like hard for me to say. I think this is meh. It smells like almost perfumey, but it could be like green tea or something. I don't know. I didn't find it did anything. So that's about it. Sprayer is okay. Not bad at all. I like that it's like small like this and easy to store. I just didn't feel like it made my makeup last. And that's kind of what I'm looking for. So that was boring. That was a makeup graveyard. You could probably pass on that. I have two eye products, but I don't go over eyeshadow palettes in these videos because I do do them separately. So I'm thinking of doing an upcoming video. So if you're interested in seeing that, be sure to subscribe because I have so many new palettes that I've been testing lately. And I think I want to do like a ranking on all the ones that I've been trying. I just, I don't know, I haven't gotten around to doing it. So the first product that I have is from Surratt. This is definitely a luxury makeup item. This is their Pristique Eyes. This one is in the shade Neutral Eyes. This is not a new release, but it has like a cream on the bottom. Actually, I guess that's the top. And then it has like a shimmer shade on the bottom. The formula is just so good and sophisticated. I like both of these. I was kind of like half expecting to like one more than the other. Like maybe I'll like the shimmer or maybe I'll like the cream shadow. But I actually like both evenly. I think that this cream one is super easy. Like it's emollient and creamy, super long lasting, super easy to blend. And then the shimmer is actually super soft and like light reflecting and it's thin too so it doesn't add any texture to your eyes it's just honestly my kind of thing it's they're both really really gorgeous and it's such a shame because it's really expensive <laughs> but i really like it and i'm such a hater of um cream shadows honestly i just i could care less about cream shadows i'm not a one and done like anything while i wanted to try Surratt, i was kind of like this is not a product for me. This is not something that I grab for on, I don't even think to grab for it, honestly, but because it was just so creamy and buttery and really long lasting and easy to work with. By the way, I'm trying to go in with a really light hand, if you can't tell. I'm just trying to kind of treat this how I think you would like normally treat it if you were somebody who liked kind of a one and done, just kind of a um, very, very light application. I just went ahead and threw the shimmer on. The only thing that I will say with this is that I do not care for these two colors together. And that's such a like deal breaker when it comes to a product like this because it's meant to be a two-in-one, two-in-done situation. And I just, I don't, 
think they complement each other. Part of it is that this is such a cool tone brown and cool tone brown. I don't know, they kind of tend to look a little bit muddy on me. So while I like the formula for both of them, I just don't think that these colors necessarily complement each other. So this is not a run out and get. I like it, you guys, but I definitely think it's makeup graveyard. One that I do think is so, so good, you guys, is from Moira Beauty. This is an affordable product. This is their Liquid Days or Diamond Days Liquid Eyeshadow. This is so good. Like, I can't even tell you how it compares to others because I've only tried a couple, but like, look at how light reflecting. Look at how much base it has underneath it. Like, it actually has a color that translates to the skin when you swatch it. This one is actually in eye contact, 05 eye contact. But like, I have so few that have such a pigmented base like this. You mostly just get like a lot of glitter. And the one thing that I worry about with my hooded lids and using liquid shadows like this is the consistent amount of transfer that you get when you start putting them on. But I feel like even though this is a super wet formula, I just don't get that transfer. I don't understand why they can make these so affordable and so beautiful, but they do. And for me, finding like a liquid shadow that doesn't transfer, it's such a big deal. So I thoroughly enjoy these, you guys, and I think these are a really good product. Huge recommendation for me. Moira Beauty is overall like affordable. Like these are pretty inexpensive for sure. Not everything that Moira makes is like a dollar. Like it's not super dirt cheap, but it's pretty affordable stuff. And if you like yourself like a shimmery liquid shadow and you want it to be punchy, these are them. Like, honestly, look no further. Go to Moira. I think this was like a new shade, actually. This is not like a new release for them, but they had a couple of new shades, and I feel like this one was one of them. If not, it was just one that looked good to me when they had the new shades that did launch, and I decided that I was going to pick that up. It's just gorgeous. Those are the only two eye products that I have. Let's move on into mascaras. I'm so debating which one to put on because I like, honestly, like I usually put both of them on, but I just don't want to put one of them on. One is the Benefit Their Real Magnet Mascara. I like it. Like I actually liked this. This is not a new release. I just tried this to try it. It's like a fat little applicator, but it's one that I like. I just like when they're short bristles like this. It was pigmented. It was lengthening. It did everything that I wanted it to, and then it transferred. <laughs> it was like down here by the end of the day, and honestly, I don't have a lot of mascaras that I have problems like that with. I don't get a lot of transfer, and it wasn't like flaking. It was genuinely transferring. It was just like picking up moisture from the air as the day went on and totally transferred to my lower lash line. So. This one's not gonna stay. You can't, you can't transfer, you can't stay. One that I freaking fell in love with, you guys, I hear nobody talking about this, but I'm obsessed at this point, was the Glam and Doll False Lashes from Catrice. This was a hidden gem for me. I'm always looking for wands like this. I'm always looking for lengthening, but not clumpy and super pigmented. And I fell in love with this right away. Let me see if I can show you just like how pigmented it is right on like first, application you know we all have our own preferences as it comes to mascara like some of us like volumizing mascara some of us like lengthening mascaras some people may not mind both formulas like just depending upon what they're looking for i think that i mostly go for a lengthening formula even if it's volumizing i still want it to also lengthen that's just my personal preference and that's really what I find with this, but it's so pigmented and like thickening because it's that false lash effect and it never transfers on me. So I wasn't expecting to love this, but I instantly fell in love with it and I kept reaching for it like over and over and over again. So this one is a huge, huge, huge recommendation for me, honestly, because I always get so picky when it comes to mascara and even though I might like them, I never ever go back to them unless they're like that really standout mascara for me. And I think this one is a super standout product. I love when I'm like filming and I'm like, I wonder how obvious it is with the window open, like how late it is in the day. I mean, like you guys see the sun setting in the video and I don't know if that's like bothering some people or not, but yeah, I guess it takes us a lot longer to film than it probably seems like when we edit it and get them up. Um, okay, let's talk about lip products. I have two lip liners. They are from the same collection. These are like the Chucky X Glam Light collection. 
So it's a little bit hard to talk about them if they're not still available. One was the Tiffany doll and then one was the like Chucky doll. But I mean, we're gonna talk about formulation here. I don't think Glamlight probably created a new formulation when they busted out these sharpenable lip liners. I just think that they were really creamy and really pigmented, like super good quality, honestly. So if Glamlight formulates all their lip liners like this, then I am currently in love with their formulation for a pencil because I'm such a hater on pencil lip liners. I'm a hater on a lot of pencil products like eyeliners and lip liners and things like that. So um, to find one that I felt was this creamy and this long lasting in a pencil formula, I was quite addicted to it. They're definitely in like pretty deep shades, but I'm still gonna throw on like the one that's in the Chucky one because I do have like a pretty dark like lip color that I want to put on for today and that is a new release. They're so creamy, you guys, like, but they're like, super long lasting formula so i'm not saying run out and get them from the chucky x glam light collection but if glam light has other lip liners like their definite purchase they're definitely good formulation so let me go over the one lip product here that i am going to put on this was one from lys this was a new release i can't even like read this tiny little writing I will have to just throw it up on the screen, but this one is in the shade Moody. It's kind of like a dark brown. I really like this packaging. It's the kind of diamond shape that LYS comes out with. It looks like a Givenchy because it has like this faux leather around it. I like this like circly bullet. It was super creamy formula. It just, I enjoyed it like immediately. It's just really, really creamy. I like that it's a really small applicator, honestly. And some people might not like that because, you know, it might take them a little bit longer to fill in their lips. But I have really small lips, so I do like that. I like the packaging. I think it was pretty expensive, honestly, but the formula is just really good. So it was a purchase for me. I'm, I remember to reach for that. The problem is I picked up a shade that I didn't realize was so grungy and so dark that um, it's not something that I can reach for all the time, but the formula is actually quite awesome. The next one that I have, or next ones that I have, are actually new releases as well. These were part of the 30 Talk collection. These are not new formulations. These are the Glowing Lips from ColourPop. So this was my first time trying this formulation, which I think came out last year for the first time. Oh my gosh, these are so good. <laughs> I freaking love these, you guys. If you like something that is opaque, but super creamy and they're affordable too, so that's good. But like, they also last all day. I honestly, I don't understand like how they last as long as they do for being as glowy a lip product as they are. I don't love all of these shades, but I think that they're quite cool. Like this one here is a color I don't have in my collection anywhere else. Like I actually wore this the other day and I was like, ooh, is that too much to go to work? And then the rest of the day, my lips were that color. Like, it just didn't fade off. I didn't get it. I don't know why. Like, it stained my lips, but it was glossy for a really long time. I don't know. These glowing lips are bomb. So these are huge recommendation for formula from me. Another one that I do like, but it's just a regular ass satin finish lipstick was also from the Chucky collection. It's not anything like to write home about. I think these are supposed to be like a matte formula, but they're kind of like a satin matte. It's good, but it's just a bullet satin lipstick. Nice and opaque, easy to apply and creamy and quite long lasting, but like, you know, not anything you can't get from e.l.f. though, so. I have another one here that I tried, I bought a long time ago, but didn't really get to try because <laughs> I bought so much um, until recently. This one is from Laura Geller. This one is one of her Jelly Balm lipsticks. Boring, 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 boring. It's so comfortable and it just feels really good going onto the skin. It's honestly just so expensive for what it is, I think you can get it at the drugstore. So I don't mean to say that I don't like it. It's just boring and that like I wasn't blown away. And Laura Geller, like honestly, she is or can be kind of expensive. I can't remember how much this was, but I feel like it was like $19. And it's just like, okay. But they have this at CVS. So anyway, pass. The next one is okay, but it's not a run out and get. This is from Give Beauty. This is not a new release. I think this came out like the end of last year. This is her I'm Still Here, like matte liquid lipstick, and this is in Tomboy. It's okay. It's a liquid lipstick. Does that help you? You guys, it's opaque and it's nice, but it like 
dries your lips out. So you gotta top it with a gloss. It doesn't break down funny though. So like if you like something that's a matte liquid lip and you just like to, you know, get a good amount of color because it stays a long time and you don't mind topping it with gloss because that's what you basically have to do with a matte liquid lip, then it's good because it doesn't break down funny. It's just super drying once it dries. So yeah, it's a matte liquid lip and it's not crappy. <laughs> that's all I could say. Okay, you guys, that was everything. <laughs> I know that I do pretty long videos every month when I'm going over like my purchaser pass, faves and fails video for the prior month. I appreciate you sticking in there with me. I know these are pretty long. I feel like sometimes people do like the longer videos. If you are new to my channel, I hope you consider subscribing and sticking around. I'm out of here, you guys, and until the next video, bye.